Well, there we go. I couldn't see the uh, digital readout there. So let me know that it actually started recording. Welcome back. I'm home and thought it might be appropriate to catch up on a few little loose ends here and there and, and touch base on uh, one topic in particular. I had been playing uh, the First World War game that, it can, that comes in the... I don't know if you can read that because I've got this... Uh, there we go, Count That Magazine. A little magazine game. Simple World War One map, blah, blah, blah. Really no terrain to speak of other than mountains. So it's all kind of assumed to be at that strategic level. And simple game that has very few rules that makes a really good attempt at trying to capture the, the feel for the situation of World War One in terms of attack, counter-attack, uh, lines moving forwards and back at a very large hex scale. So I, I thought overall I was kind of pleased with the game. I did, unfortunately didn't get to finish it. I only got, I think, turn eight, seven, something like that. I'm just looking, I've got some pictures up here. I didn't take any video. Uh, but I had to pack it up because of the challenges we had here in the house with the flooring and, and things that I posted up in the other video. So uh, my kids moved their PCs and Xboxes and stuff into my office right here. We've now subsequently moved them back out. Part of the price for that was having to pack this up. So is it a game that I would play again? I think I would definitely play it opposed. I don't think it would... Uh, um, war in a second playing in uh, in a solo kind of format the couple of things that I thought were nifty in, in this, the game was the how they dealt with the African Middle East uh, more of a Middle East situation around Jerusalem and Aleppo and whatnot. Uh, I thought that was a kind of clever little mechanic there I like the uh, technology slash combat bonus tools with artillery and there's flamethrower and air and things like that can be used on occasion throughout the game as uh, as the the time progresses overall though you are uh, you're, you're kind of forced into a scenario where you you have to make some hard choices about how to play diplomacy and how to play with your technology because it's going to impact your morale. And once your morale goes down to zero, uh, you're you're out of the game, you lose, and also it doesn't come back. There's no way to gain morale points. You can gain victory points, but not morale points. So I found I found that uh, interesting, but res very restrictive. And I think it, that kind of harkens back to the situation in, in World War One. Now, with that said, uh, I don't know that you can achieve all the grand tactical... Uh, specific successes that, that that occurred in World War One in the early war, uh, in in Term One, for instance, I don't think you can achieve what what the Germans achieved in Term One necessarily. So, from a strictly historical point of view, it's probably not going to play out the same way. Uh, but it is interesting enough to you know kind of get the juices flowing and you know make you got to you're playing with things a, a little bit differently because of the way combat works and. Uh, and where the combat results work as well. So I I liked the game. I thought it was a fine uh, a, a fine game. I I didn't mind the counters and the counter arts. It's all straight, you know, straight up NATO format. <clears throat> I thought the map artwork was a little droll. It's kind of just all a plain green color and I don't and the choice of actual tone of green, you know, that's all subjective, right? But all I like I like the I like the um, the blue on the ocean. You know, the the blue on the ocean actually has more texture and, and interest to it than, than the rest of the terrain does. But uh, anyway, fine little game. So, I don't know. I forget how much this magazine costs now. Uh, and I don't know how much you would pay for this separately. It's probably one of those 15 or $20 folio games. So, uh, it's a pretty, pretty nice little game. Nine pages of rules. It's called One WW World War One in Europe. That's the that's the rule set right there. 
nice. It's nothing to write home about or jump up and down and get excited about. But if you're looking for your first experience with World War One and, and looking at some of the challenges, I'd heartily recommend it as a first place to start, particularly if you want something simple. It's probably a good intro game as well. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there and then we'll talk about some other stuff in a minute.